Our first reading is from chapter from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judea, Here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lamb in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Second Peter chapter 3. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed." Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we will wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it was written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Home is a very special place. Home is a place where everything is perfect, where all is right with the world. Home is where you feel safe and secure. Home is where you are centered. Home is where you have a place and connection. Home is where love resides, memories are created, friends always belong, and laughter never ends. Home is a place where there is no mourning or crying or shame or pain and tears have been wiped away forever. Even in these days, when our physical home is something completely different, 
When our home is our work, our school, and our playground, even when our home is filled with stress and anxiety, and even if you have never experienced the kind of home I just described, or for you, home conjures up uncomfortable feelings, we all have a longing for such a metaphorical place as home, a place where we have experienced briefly, but always seems just a little out of reach in its fullest. And this longing for home seems stronger this year than ever before, coming off a very different Thanksgiving celebration and in some ways a rather uncomfortable one, and heading towards what we already know will be a very, very different Christmas with COVID numbers skyrocketing, with everything else we have experienced in 2020, home seems like it is farther away than ever. So much so that we feel like exiles from our home. Because this is not our home. That is why Mary Ellen's statement was so powerful for me because the difference between despair and hope is where you look. And for me, that statement has become the theme for Advent because this feeling of longing, of really realizing that life is not the way it should be and how far from home we really are is exactly what the season of Advent is all about, which is why we start our liturgical calendar with the season of Advent. Because in some ways, this longing for home has been with us from the very beginning of time. See, and the biblical authors actually had a name for home, this idea of home. And it was called Eden, a place where heaven and earth were one, a place where we walked side by side with one another and with God in the cool of the evening, a place where there was no predator or prey, a place where shame did not exist, where life itself was in balance, but as quickly as Eden existed, Jealousy and death and anger and selfishness and shame became realities, and Eden was lost. And for the bulk of human existence, for its entirety, some would say, we have been living east of Eden in the wilderness. But throughout history, through Noah and the ark, Abraham and Sarah, Jacob, David and Solomon, God has been wanting to bring us home. God has been working to bring us home. And in the meantime, the temple for the Jewish people had reminders of this Eden home. It was filled with trees and plants and fruit and angels so that they could remember Eden and because the temple was located in Jerusalem, the city itself took on a significance as an extension of Eden as well. But when Jerusalem was sacked and the temple was destroyed by the Babylonian Empire, Eden was lost again and people were in exile once more. During this time of Advent, these times of realizing the great disconnect between reality and home, these times of great longing can feel like God has forgotten us or that God doesn't care. But Advent is also a time of expectation when we are reminded that God does indeed care and God will act. And in the midst of the exile in Babylon, God's word comes to the prophet Isaiah. In the midst of the exile, God commands, Comfort, O oh comfort my people. In the midst of their longing, their disconnect, their wilderness of exile, tell them that a reversal of misfortune is coming. The valley shall be raised, the mountains brought low, the uneven ground shall become level, the rough places plain. Anything that keeps you from getting home will be overturned. God is going to make a way out of the desert to bring them home. God will come to gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. The prophet is reminding people that the difference between despair and hope is where you look. 
But even when that was over, even when the exiles went home, life might have been a little better, but there was still warfare and injustice and shame and poverty and hunger and alienation and selfishness. Essentially, no matter how good life got for some, humanity was still in the wilderness east of Eden, which is why the beginning of Mark's gospel, which at first seems a little odd this time of year, if you ask me, is actually the perfect reading for this time of year. Because Mark's beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is not a beginning. But it's a reminder of the continuation of what God has been doing. But now, on a much larger scale. Which is why Mark starts with making John the new Isaiah in the wilderness, east of Eden. Mark is taking us back to remind us of the state we're in in order to tell us that God's plan to bring us back home is about to take a whole new turn. Because no matter how God, no, because we all know that home is not home until everyone is there. So no longer will God be working through a messenger or a political power, but God will be coming in the flesh to open home and bring all people home. This is what the story of Jesus is all about, bringing us all and us and all of creation back to Eden. And in fact, the larger arc of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation is all about Eden, home, home being lost, and home being returned. And everything Jesus will do in his life and ministry is creating pockets of home, outposts of Eden in the midst of this exile life. And because Jesus' did, Jesus' story did not end in death but in resurrection, we know that God's story isn't over. For Mark's entire gospel is only the beginning of the good news of Jesus. And because he lives, the good news continues. So yes, the difference between despair and hope is where you look. Because one day there will be a time when mourning and crying and pain will be no more. One day when heaven and earth will be one again. There will be a time when we are no longer in the wilderness east of Eden. And we will, there, and we will walk side by side with one another and with God in the cool of the evening once more. God is not done yet. God is still at work. And just like Isaiah and John, we in this time are called to be heralds of this good news. For the command that we heard, O comfort, O comfort, my people in Isaiah, is actually a plural command. It's not for one person, it's for many people. And in the midst of this disconnect from home, we are strengthened by the sacraments and by one another, even virtually, to continue to bring good news of God's plan to others. No matter what it is, all gestures of love, big or small, participate in God's ongoing work and God's mission to bring hope to the hopeless. So, Whatever it is, whether it's refraining from gathering with loved ones, whether it's wearing a mask in public or purchasing from a local retailer to support them or making a donation to a charitable organization or writing a note of encouragement to someone who is struggling or participating in the holiday baskets or the presents for our neighbor's child as you've done or calling or Zooming with someone who is lonely and the list goes on. All of these things remind people of home and renew their hope in the midst of any despair that they might be feeling. Because there is no doubt that we are not home. There is no doubt that we are still living east of Eden in the wilderness. But Jesus is still raised. And so death and separation and alienation do not have the final word Because God still is at work to bring us home. And when that day comes, it will be a day of good news, of great joy for all people. Amen.